I'm Andrew yet again, and uh, today is episode 118. One, one, eight. Yesterday we saw Jesus on the mountain with uh, people being healed in significant numbers and totally blown away by what Jesus was doing. And totally blown away by the power and presence of God who was present and uh, got the glory for it. So today we're picking it up, Jesus in the same place, and we pick up the narrative in Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd, because they've been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd. And all of them ate and were filled. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Those who had eaten were more than 4,000 men besides women and children. After sending the crowd away, he got into the boat and went off, and went to the region of Magadan. So we see Jesus here concerned about the most ordinary things of life. Food. What are they going to eat? And it kind of adds a touch of authenticity to the story. It's not being ignored, it's not being passed over, it's not being forgotten about. It is something that would have been real and would have been present. I've often reflected as I've watched movies as I was growing up, you know, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, sort of movies I really enjoyed were Gregory Peck and uh, The Guns of Navarone and um, another one that followed soon after that I'm trying to think of the name of the, the main actor who was married to Elizabeth Taylor for a while was uh, uh, Where Eagles Dare, both Alistair MacLean movies and I may have been the only one who ever watched these kind of movies who asked the question in my own mind when do these guys ever go to the toilet because they're caught in most difficult situations for very extended periods of time and they never seem to t need to take a break to relieve themselves in any kind of way and that was always the thing that kind of stretched credibility for me they never stopped to go to the loo Richard Burton was the uh, was the actor in uh, Where Eagles Dare. And you might think, well, you've got a particularly kind of interesting kind of mind there, Andrew. But I mean, it's just one of those things. And so here we have this great crowd, 4,000 plus. There may have been 10,000, there may have been more all up. That is a lot of people. Where did they sleep? Did they just hunker down in little family groups? Maybe. It may have been that it wasn't cold, it was maybe summer and it was okay. Because um, as they said, it was described in the drizzle. What did they drink? I have no idea. And eating, what did they eat? Well, part of the difficulty is that we, I, live in the 21st century in an environment where we expect to eat three meals a day and often more mornings and afternoon teas as well as breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it's become a normal part of our living, which why why many of us struggle with the issues of weight, because we have a surplus of food and a huge amount of waste. But at the time of Jesus, this was not the case. You see the parables like the workers in the vineyard. And one of the things I think that's often missed in that particular parable is that the workers who, worked, who only worked for an hour at the end of the day would have spent the whole day fretting about how they were going to buy food for their families. That if they didn't get a day's wages, 
Their kids, their wives themselves, were going to go to bed with grumbling, empty tummies that day. A lot of people worked on a day by day. We might work from paycheck to paycheck, and it may be week to week, or fortnight to fortnight, or month to month. But for these people, it was day to day. And what they got, the denarius they got for a day, was just enough to feed them and the family for one day. That was it. So this, I suspect, is a people that are used to going hungry. This is a people that don't walk around with full bellies most of the time. And so I think about issues of toilets. I know that if I go for a period where I have just one meal a day, everything slows down. I don't need to use the toilets the same way that I would. And I would presume that in an environment like this, they'd have protocols. Men over to the left, ladies over to the right, to kind of deal with those issues. And being hungry was normal. It was not something that was unusual for them. So to go for a couple of days without food, not extraordinary. We'd imagine it would be kind of a major crisis, but for them, perhaps not out of the ordinary. So here they are, and Jesus cares about it. He recognises that three days is a long stretch, and he's wanting to make sure that they all go home with something in their bellies. One of the things that I find interesting about the story is that it's not that long ago since in the same gospel we read of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And that was for just one day. This is three days. That was a one day event. And you think, well maybe it was just a fluke that so many got fed. Maybe a lot of them brought their own food. It's a possibility. And they all learnt to share. It's a possibility they did this as well. But this is a long event, three days. And the food uh, is running low. What do you make of it? I don't know. I don't know. But clearly, what we see here is that with every new challenge, Jesus meets with a concern, a deep concern for the people. The word that is used here is um, for compassion. I have compassion for the people. It's blank nizomai. It is only ever used of God or by God. You see it in the parable of the um, prodigal son, where the father sees his son in the distance. And the same words, blank nizomai, he had compassion for him. And the sense of it, as you you can get a real picture of it, is that he hasn't seen the son, but he recognizes him. You see the one that you love coming in the distance, the way that he walks. And he did something very undignified. He picked up the edges of his garments and he ran. Old Jewish men don't run, but he ran. He saw his son and he flings his arms around him. He is so full of love for him. So full of a desire. He, he sees the wretched state into which he got himself. And he wants to make it all okay. Splank nizomai means bowels. It's the, the gut. It's the deep part of the person. It has the sense of, the literal sense is, his heart turns over within him. It's his bowels turns over. In the old King James Version, it used to talk about the bowels of mercy. It's where we feel most deeply. And Jesus is seeing this crowd, and he just, everything in him turns over. He wants to bless. He wants to heal. He wants to make a difference. It's that kind of response he has towards this people. And so he wants to provide for them. E. Stanley Jones, that great missionary to India, a Methodist missionary, a great missionary to India, in his book, I was reminded of this by a friend just a day or so back, uh, In Christ, he talks about Jesus and God, the Father. And he basically says that God is a representation of Jesus. We often think that Jesus is a representation of God. 
but he says actually no God is a Christ-like God the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a Christ-like God that what we see in Jesus is a picture of who God is so that we can expect God to be like Jesus is to God to respond to act to reach towards us in the way that Jesus does because God is Christ-like. Interesting way of putting it, isn't it? And so here we see as Jesus as he's ministering with this crowd, as he responds to the needs of the people, as he teaches them, and in the end as he makes sure that they get what they need. Not everybody gets what they want. Everybody gets what they need. And so he makes sure that these people go and they've got what they need. This is the God whom we encounter, the God whom we worship, the one who makes sure that ultimately we get what we need, the Christ-like God. God bless you.